Section 7. The Battle for the Birds, Part 3. Chapter 16. March 31. Terry knew that there was still something wrong with his legs. The skin on his shins looked and felt as thin as a sheet of tracing paper and the aching ran deep into his bones. Long lines of blistered flashburns convinced him that voltage was the cause even though he knew also that they could be nerve-related. The small blood blisters traced his nerve lines as they ran up his leg. Just the fact that these had reappeared almost overnight confirmed to him that the old channels had re-established themselves as he slept and the rays were traveling through him and up toward their targets which were the corners, the lighting, both wall and ceiling, the tower, the wall corners, the buttress and this was complemented by those that left the room to hit multiple targets in the hallway. When the next order of window film arrived, Terry cut a section from the roll without delay and stuck it to the large toilet window. He knew what to do and when all the remaining solvent had been pushed to the edges leaving the glass and film bonded together, an eruption of attempts started up from under his bed. He knew that he had done the right thing. It was now much clearer to him that the actions on the studio side were strongly affecting the mapping attempts in the bedroom and the lounge. The clicker beneath the bathroom started up its infernal desperate rhythms just as Terry covered the smallest studio window with the film. He had, at first, cleaned the glass back with a razor blade before combing the transparent layer into position and a crow noticed his actions. Once the film was up, another crow startled him as it flew off from the guttering above the window to join a pigeon on the old-style aerials toward the city. A small bird hovered briefly at the cast-iron drainage pipes again, declaiming a lively song before flying off. What did this mean? Within five minutes, he was adding tape and aluminium to the bedroom corner nearest to the door in an effort to reduce the strength of the subterranean terror that was flying across and up and toward it from the buttress. He followed another signal back into the lounge which travelled through the immersion side wall with ease and up into the central light fitment. This was measured at close to a right angle to the mast, but Terry was, by now, not astonished to discover that the lines could fly backwards or sideways in their attempts to link with a matching signal. All sorts of methods were being attempted. Alongside the danger spots were other places where the attempts had become so constrained that Terry could walk around the flat whilst measuring the delightful horizontal zeros in the majority of areas up to shoulder level. He economically stuck the extra window film that he had cut away from the frames onto the small opening window in the toilet. Things were changing. The bubble wrap that had been hastily laid out against the lounge wall near to the window was then stuck into position on the offending lounge immersion wall and Terry returned to the bedroom with a coffee, settling his mind. The meter was inevitably nearby. The situation was narrowing. All this was fast becoming just another thing to deal with and Terry involuntarily smiled as the first genuine emotion for quite some time surfaced. He felt in command. The birds sat silently in the trees in support as they assessed the changes. After a while, Terry decided to test the power of the film material by snipping two long thin lengths away from the roll and sticking them in an L shape on the lower corner of the studio window. He went back to the lounge. This time, there was a magpie waiting for him on the roof further down the hill. It saw him through the mast side window. The other flat hid most of Terry's flat from the mast's scrutiny and as he put a rectangle into the upper area of the window, the bird watched him in curiosity. As Terry made his move the magpie skipped across the roof toward him before flying straight at the window and up to the slant of his roof. Terry could see its dancing silhouette on the brickwork opposite as it scuttled up the angled tiles against the sun. A cormorant flew across the scene of the action like a sewing needle perfectly bisecting the distance between Terry and the mast. It looked to be unaffected by all the electric pollution below and was following the direct line that its ancestors had always followed. Nature was still teaching him a lesson. Terry followed its determined flight from right to left as it made its way up the river valley's path toward the forest. He left the window and replaced the German fleece into position before folding a loose sheet of window film to join it hanging high over the curtain rail. The lounge felt older and more beckoning. Terry checked the lower areas of the room and they appeared to be clean even if the computer desk's electrical cables were still being constantly assessed by one thing or another. 
The immersion side wall was brewing problems so Terry threw another offcut of the film behind the music cabinet. This was such an obvious route, straight through the back wall of the immersion cupboard and out through the lounge wall. Two jackdaws flew through the garden to check on the atmosphere. They charted the block a few times in a day and were comparing the morning signals to those in the late afternoon. They gave two unconvincing calls and left. Terry placed the rest of the window film roll on the lounge window sill. It was a good place. The next morning, Terry was nursing his legs. His calves itched just below the skin surface and the gristle in his knees was reduced to putty. He pointed the meter around the room and this gave him a good idea of the patterns. He was blocked in like a child in a play brick world. Every part of the flat had been looked at. Its material dimensions had been stripped clean away to a literal framework version in his mind where the lines and angles were all that counted. Terry knew that his judgments were working and although he never felt out of sight of the signal's eyes, he felt more protected. Next to be looked at was the bedroom window. As Terry worked he saw that the radar van was back and it swiveled its apparatus aimed to gain a good view of Terry cleaning back the glass. Within a few minutes Terry's camera was trained on the van, taking visual evidence, just in case. Once the film was up, he cut away the edges and smoothed it out. A slight signal was still rising toward it from across the hallway near to the toilet and yet more lines were stemming from under the wardrobe corner but the readings were not in the same dangerous regions and Terry lay back on the bed for ten minutes, coming to terms with the situation. His feet ached and his back was itchy and he was tired from all the overnight attempts but now there was very little doubt that the horse's options were getting limited. Terry got up once more and went to the lounge and the small garden side lounge window nearest to the mast which was given a film coating and opened. He left. As Terry walked up the hill to the green, a group of crows in a large oak nodded toward him as if in full understanding of the situation. The window films were proving themselves a powerful weapon and, the small bits that were stuck up to the small inner kitchen window had caused so much disarray that Terry was more than pleased. The fresh morning light made the situation appear even clearer and the crow's eyes appeared to him more keen. He was part of their world. When he returned to the flat, Terry could almost see the angles for what they were. He used the meter to link the painful back hits to the firing of microwave beams and his weak and feeble leg muscles were explained away by the continual shunts of voltage that he experienced. The large Swiss shield sheet was moved to the far corner of the lounge where it was fixed up to hang covering the whole left-hand side corner. The huge tent-like protection was improved by pulling the material toward the wall and attaching it with aluminium foil. Suddenly that whole side of the building felt safer and the bedside readings fluctuated in anger. Accordingly, he needed to sit down in order to steady the rhythm of his heart and let the drumbeat in his ears subside. 